Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson, this is Maker Size. In this project, I make this pair of tongs to move stainless steel flasks in and out of my kiln. This is part of my ongoing efforts to integrate lost PLA casting into my shop process. I start with a visit to a local scrap dealer recommended by a friend. I'm gonna get this well water pressure tank and I think that might become my cast iron foundry. It's about the right size. This place is great. I mean, they've got like all kind of scrap steel. I'm standing on like a, a pile five feet thick of quarter inch steel sheets. Uh, most of them I think are probably at least four feet by five feet and they sell it for about 20 cents a pound. So uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty cool place. I loaded 420 pounds of steel in my truck and that cost me about $90. Nearly half of that was a 48 by 58 sheet of quarter inch steel. I knocked a fair amount of rust off in the bed of my truck before I brought it into the shop. And I don't have a proper welding table currently, so this sheet will serve as a stopgap uh, welding surface until I can get around to building or acquiring a welding table. For the time being, it's just sitting right now on the outfeed table of my table saw. I cleaned up the three quarter inch steel tube and uh, inch and a half flat bar with a wire brush in my drill. I cut it to sections roughly to length according to my plans using a portable bandsaw. And at this point I realized that I'd need a better way to cut it to the final length. This is one of my scrapyard finds. It's about eight and a half by 28 inches long and probably three eighths of an inch, half an inch thick stainless steel. I'm gonna try to use it as a table for my portable bandsaw and that way I can cut the stuff a little bit more effectively to length before I sand it. I cut into the half inch sheet of stainless steel as far as the bandsaw would go. I measured the throat plate and corresponding mounting holes on the bandsaw to determine where the fasteners should go. I dyed the plate and laid out the location of the mounting holes and center punched them. I used my drill press to drill five and a half millimeter holes and then I used a 13 millimeter drill bit to counterbore a recess for the hex head bolts that I used to mount the bandsaw to the plate. Having the bandsaw mounted vertically was critical, uh, especially in making the long tapered cuts uh, that are around the hinge on the tongs. I used the sander to sand down the corners to the right angles and kind of clean up those parts. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to do before I get started welding is I'm going to take uh, the few pieces that need holes drilled in them over to the drill press. I will drill smaller holes um, than what I ultimately end up with, especially for the rivets because I want to match drill them. So I'm going to go ahead and get a three millimeter hole. Uh, I've got four millimeter rivets, so I'm going to do a three millimeter hole initially. And then once I have those pieces together, I can match drill them. And uh, hopefully that'll make it a little smoother operation. I'm using my assembly dimension drawing to lay out reference marks along the edge of this piece of steel, my tabletop. And that allows me to have locations to fix the parts. And then I'll clamp them in place and weld them. Now this pair of tongs is what I'm making, but this project is as much about why I'm making these tongs as it is about the actual build. I have zero training in welding and zero experience even TIG welding. However, TIG's a skill that I want. The why for this project is maker size, pure and simple. I need practice TIG welding and these tongs seem like a good project, uh, and a great excuse to get out in the shop and exercise my inner maker.
I spent plenty of time sharpening my tungsten, but not as much as I figured I would. I also learned that I probably need a decent shop stool to make getting into position a little more efficient. All in all, I'm real happy with my welds, uh, considering this is really my first ever TIG project. I also really like clamping stuff to the edge of the table. Having the drawings to show where to lock everything down seemed to really help. Using this technique, I had very minimal movement of the parts and really is mostly around the brace at the hinges. I used a 10 thousandths shim, but I could have gone a little thicker and I ended up needing to persuade the tongs a little bit in the vise to get a good fit. I hit the end of life on the bandsaw blade in my portable bandsaw and I thought it might be because of the table that I made. I double checked and I, I have plenty of clearance around the blade so I think it just happened to be at end of life and fortunately I had some spare blades uh, on hand. For the end effectors I had to use my vise to squeeze the one inch square tube down to a nice fit around the three quarter inch tube and then I match drilled holes for the mounting bolts. The end effectors have a quarter inch rod that sticks out at a 45 degree angle. I tried a number of different approaches to get these pieces held in place while I tacked it in and then finished welding them. And it, what seems to work the best is just this little extra set of hands for soldering and that seems to work the best. So I like that approach. You know, in, in actuality, TIG welding does seem very analogous to soldering. I inserted the solid tong side into the split tong side, and then I match drilled the holes to four millimeters. Now this provides a snug fit on the steel pop rivets that I used at the hinge. I cleaned up the inside of the end effectors using the sander and then I installed them on the tongs. I designed them this way so I could have interchangeable end effectors if I feel like that's necessary down the road. After a quick test on the flasks, I wiped down the tongs with acetone and spray painted them. If you're interested in the plans that I use to make these tongs, you can sign up for my email list and have them for free. I hope this project encourages you to exercise your inner maker. Thanks for watching.